All right, it's a big week 10. A lot of people making start sit decisions. The bipocalypse going on. Don't miss our starts of the week starting right now. Hey, this is David Johnson, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, oh, welcome in. It's football time. Hey, mm. hey, hey. Thank you, Mike. It is football time. And you didn't forget. You brought it. Not you this were time. so ready. Never happened. <laughs> Thursday, November 7th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast back with you on Twitter at the FF Ballers. The community join the foot.com. We are excited for today's episode. Gonna play a little Who Am I during our quick question. We have uh, the first half of the fantasy forecast. Starts of the week, boom boom kicker. We've got football tonight, and I'm actually pretty excited about this game. I like divisional games, and both of these teams have intrigued me and intrigued fantasy owners. I want to see what happens tonight. And uh, let's get right into it. Let's play some Who Am I? Oh. You, you guys ready? Put yeah. on your, put on your thinking on. caps. <sighs> um, I'm good to go. <laughs> I like how Mike putting on his thinking cap is still warming up his vocal cords. <clears throat> me, I'm, me, me. I'm opening the chakra, bro. Oh, okay. I'm, I, this is all you. Who am I? Well, clue number one. I'm the clear-cut wide receiver one on my team. All right? Ooh. That doesn't... Down to 32 teams. I'd like to answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we're playing guess who, I mean, I've just flipped down a bunch of positions. Okay. Okay. That's, That's true. true. Do you wear glasses? <laughs> <laughs> Are you bald? <laughs> uh, Clue number two. So clear cut number one, wide receiver. Clue number two. My team has the eleventh most passing plays so far in twenty nineteen. Oh, that what a great clue. I mean, that I one's was, actually I was thinking th they were going to be top ten, but eleven. That's a rough one. Okay, <laughs> that's not the helping. Eleven, All right. The eleventh most passing attempts in on yes, the season. On okay. the season. Clue number three. Uh, the problem. Okay, so then maybe they kind of tie together. The problem with being, you know, you're near the. The top, you're in the top half of mm -hmm. passing attempts. The problem is I only have 55, 55 oh. targets. So that's 29th mm. among wide receivers. I'm the number one, but I've only got 55 targets. I feel like I know it. I've got a guess, but I, I think they're lower than 11th. So ironically, the stupidest clue is what is giving me the most information here. Well, I would. what I would say is you might be really clued in with number four. So you might want to take one shot now, and then I'll give you clue number four. Okay. Do you want to take one shot now? I well, feel like we're trending towards a negative narrative. So I'm going to throw out Odell Beckham Jr. Okay. I think he has way more targets than 55. Probably. So but, um, how about... Do Would you like another clue, Jason? <laughs> Scary <laughs> Terry. A, no. Oh. No. All right. The I'm tight out. ends on my team. <laughs> I'm done. The tight ends on my team have a combined 87 targets. Oh, is this oh, Hollywood, Brown? Hollywood Brown? That's a good guess. It is not. Ooh. But we were both there yeah, together. We there. So I that feel makes like perfect. That is a perfect makes perfect sense. But you probably would have need to needed to lean on the whole like passing volume hint there, right? Because Baltimore is not going to be that high in passing volume. Eleventh most pass attempts in football. Oh, so. Yeah. Yeah. So I right, we're going all the way to clue five today. Uh, all right. So yeah. I I'll, I'll run those back real quick. You got the tight ends with eighty seven targets. This number one wide receiver only has fifty five. Does he only have fifty five because he's missed a few games? Uh that that could is be. Is it T Y Hilton? No. Damn. Wow, oh, this my is, goodness. You guys are out of practice. Okay. All right. Uh, my team's on by. Well, that's so, there's, there's so many six teams. teams on by. All right. Um. All right. I, I bet Brooks knows. Yeah, Brooks came up with this. So I wonder if the listeners are, are – like, this one seems very stumpy. I wonder if people are out there going, it's clearly so-and-so. Number one. I think the tight end clue is the biggest one. I did, too. I thought you guys would lock it down, but then that was a good guess with Hollywood. 
But he's missed a number of games. All right. Let me that, think he doesn't, here. He, there's no how way many, Hollywood has 55 targets. Tight ends. How, how many teams have two good tight ends? Uh, oh, is this Alshon? It is yeah, Alshon, Jeffrey. It is okay. Alshon. He's on by I this claim week. victory. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Way to it go, is, Mike. I mean, that's, that's impressive kind of – uh, Talk to me about where you're at with Alshon both this season and then – looking to the future because it's just kind of been ho-hum, right? Nothing that we've said about Alshon isn't true. He's the number one. He's got the most targets. But what's going on with the Eagles? Uh, they're just kind of towing the line. So here's the deal. The, the last, you know, the beginning first five weeks of the season, I think we were I, – I was – happier than expectations on Alshon Jeffrey. He, uh, you know, I saw him coming the first into this five year. five weeks? Yeah. Yeah, the first... Uh, the, he played uh, oh, week the first, one and then he got hurt. The first six weeks. Well, no, because weeks Once, four, five, and six, his fantasy finishes, he was 22nd, 35th, and then he was the wide receiver eight. So the first six weeks obviously didn't play in week three. But it's the last three weeks that we remember the most, and that's where he's been the wide receiver 66, 41, and 55. Oh, I told you I need a button. Yeah. Um, but those matchups have been really bad. I mean, this was that stretch run for the Eagles, including when they get back from by against New England. Right. It was really difficult. That's Dallas, Buffalo, and Chicago. Those are not good matchups. So I do think as the season goes along, knowing that DJX is not coming back, at least in the fantasy season, I think Alshon's going to be a very reliable second half of the year player. Once he gets past the Patriots. Yes. Because after that, then you have Seattle, plus matchup. Miami, very plus matchup. So if, if you the have Giants, Al very plus matchup. The Redskins, very plus matchup. If you have Alshon, just hold on to him right now. He's such a difficult player for me because I feel like he's an touch, uh, entirely touchdown dependent player. And... Even last year, you know, you had six games last year that he was, you're happy. You were miserable every other game. Not like kind of, he didn't equivocate. He was right. either top 20 or he was 50, 55, 70, 58, 39. He doesn't, this is not the Jeffrey of old is all I'm saying. I think this is a, a, a Jeffrey that you have to cap your expectations on. At least I feel that See, way. See the Jeffrey of being old? No. Yeah, that that might be might be accurate, and it could be. I mean, the so uh, where where Jeffrey was actually strong, you know, the, especially in targets, games four, five, and six, nine, eight, and twelve targets. Those are nice. Yeah, and it's I. That's when Dallas Goddard was on the field, but he was still dealing with. He it. was still recovering. I mean, Dallas Goddard. He's ruining my Zachary. <laughs> He's ru ruining my Alshon. I loved Dallas Goddard coming into this season. I realized I have regrets. <laughs> you brought up Odell Beckham. I did see an interesting stat this morning. He has more games with eight or fewer targets this year than he had from, I believe, 2016 through 2018. Makes sense. Which is he's had four games that way. So I still think he's going to progress with Baker. It's interesting this week. We'll talk about the matchup today, but the Browns are favored. We had to confirm it. Yes, like across multiple. Yes, the Browns sources. The but Browns are favored. playing the Bills. It it it, it is in Cleveland, but they're favored by three. Yeah, which is wild, wild to me. Yeah, I I do think the Browns win the game, but I would have imagined Vegas had Buffalo at six and two, at least you know heads up in this one. But there you go. Lots of news to get into. Let's do that right now. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Ah, Chiefs fans and fantasy fans, rejoice. Patrick Mahomes was a full participant in Wednesday's practice. Yesterday, I, I did the math on the injury. Tomorrow will be day 21 Ooh. from the injury. And that was the date that's been out there quoted as re-injury chances higher within that first three weeks. Andy Reid came out and said Mahomes wanted to play the day he got hurt. He felt like he could go back out there. They've taken the smart route. He seems pretty – how confident are you he'll be out there Sunday? 
Uh, at, very, very confident. At this point, I'm like 60-40. I, st- I still think that there's a chance that the Chiefs intervene and say, yes, the injury risk is lower, but I need the, I need the injury re-injury risk to be you know, down near 1% or 2% when you're Pat Mahomes. Uh, that being said, he's practicing in full. He's passed the date that was floated out last week as the date he wanted to get to. So I would, I still lean that he plays. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I was in your camp of kind of thinking there's no way, but with the update yesterday and that timeline, I'm at, I'm at ninety ten full on Wednesday. It just, it's, it certainly seems like he'll play. All right, Sean McVay said Brandon Cooks won't play in Week Ten. We knew that uh, it could be a while. We don't yeah. know the timeline. David Johnson says he is definitely playing in Week Ten against the Buccaneers. Says he's a hundred percent. Well, that's good. We, uh, we'll, uh, we, while we break down matchups and talk about uh, other things, we'll talk about David Johnson a little bit. <laughs> okay. Also, on the Brandon Cooks thing, I think he's not someone that you must drop, but if you're in one of these positions where uh, you know you got the buys or or whatnot, he is a droppable player because if if I had to just guess with no medical knowledge here, I think there's a chance he doesn't play again this year. Or or is out you know a month or longer. This was you know a a, a quick re concussion that has now kept him out for a while, and he's seeing flying across the country to see multiple specialists. Well, I think a compelling argument can be simply made that you're not talking about a player that was a top five, so top he, ten wide he, receiver. He had he he's gave not you not been good two games, fantasy. two games inside the top twenty this year. Yeah, so and, and the situation reminds me so much of Sterling Shepard, who had the the quick right. back-to-back concussions and has not been able to get back on the field, despite what he said as well. Sometimes yeah. this—that's not my only hesitation with David Johnson—is looking at the workload expectation. We'll have to talk about that later because he said he was fine the two weeks that he wasn't fine. So he's been day to day for weeks. For weeks, <laughs> he's been day to day. Yeah, uh, has at, anyone ever been month to month? Oh man. Andrew That's Luck. That's a tough... Uh, oh! oh! Yeah. That's he's not a player anymore. We can do that. He's year to year right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Evan Ingram, out for week 10. Diagnosed with a midfoot sprain, considered week to week. So there's also consideration of putting Sterling Shepard on IR for the concussion situation. Very unfortunate. Just talked about Cooks. And so no Ingram as a weapon, no Shepard as a weapon. I would expect Saquon to get his 9 to 12 targets out of the backfield. Golden Tate will be the so, main man and then I Darius mean, Slayton. Slayton is Slayton is sneaky this week. Great it's it's a good matchup for the Giants and someone's got to catch the ball. And if you go back at the earlier in the season when they were, you know, missing Shepard and missing guys, a random somebody from the New York Giants always stepped up and had 60 70 yards, but it seems like Slayton kind of has established himself in that role. So yeah, as the outside wide receiver, yes. Yeah. Golden Tate has established, I think, being the number one. I, I'm, yeah, yes, of course. Slayton is, is is tough because he's had five receptions across three weeks, two, two, and one. So last week I would have thought he would get involved and only had one catch. So I'm like, you're right. He He's definitely a, a, a dart throw candidate this week, but I'd like to see more than five catches over three sure. weeks. Matt Ryan limited in Wednesday's practice. Okay. You expect him to play? I do. I do as well. And if he does, I, I would have made him my start of the week. Uh, you know, Really? On the road in St. Louis? I mean, sorry, in New Orleans? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Matt Ryan. The game's in St. Louis. Think, we'll I, see you there. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I think that the, the matchup is really good. I expect a high-scoring game if I knew he was going to be out. But I, I don't think it's... You know, trending to play. I would guess he's in, but it's really it's a tough situation to to say he's definitely going to play. They have the, it's the second highest over under of the week, like, so they're planning on him playing. The, the sharps in Vegas think Matt Ryan's playing. All right, bad news. AJ Green didn't feel well enough to practice. Now considered day to day, he came down with a. Uh, my sources say it's called a Finley. Oh no, <laughs> that's a- not nice. Actually, in in truth, what happened is. Once he thought he was okay, it swelled up again, and now he's dealing with swelling. And That's ridiculous. That is, yeah, because how long this has been, that's concerning. I mean, A.J. Green is, you know, has been an unmitigated bust this year unless you've got an IR slot, and even still, he's he's hurt. But, I mean, you still have to hold him, right? 
Like at this point, he's so yeah, close. Especially when, it, like earlier in the week, Coach Zach Taylor was saying, AJ Green, I expect him to make his debut. Yeah, but he's hurting people. Yeah, I mean, we knew about the injury, fortunately, before the draft season. So it wasn't right. like you were drafting AJ Green at the top of the drafts. But you, I, I took him in the back half of lots of leagues. There's no silver lining with AJ Green this right. year and uh, of any kind. He he was uh, I kept throwing this out and I'm very happy about it. He was my Doug Baldwin this year where I was not buying the injury dip because when you're at the tail end of the career and you have something that is creeping up going into the season, I'm just staying away from now on. James Conner limited in Wednesday's practice. Trey Edmonds who filled in at running back last week behind Jalen Samuels did not practice dealing with a rib injury. Oh, that's good. Dwayne Haskins expected to start week 11. This is an early announcement considering Washington's on by. Haskins gets the uh, seal of approval from the head coach, it, and now he's got two weeks with the first team to practice. I, I, it, it, this, this is a tough one because I, I commend Washington. This, this is the right football move. You took him early in the first round. Your team is not making the playoffs. To continue to go with Case Keenum – it seems like a move to simply get wins and, you know, get the tape for Callahan to get some kind of other job. The right move is to see if Dwayne Haskins is actually your quarterback uh, of the of the future or should you take one because you're going to have a very, very high pick. I am not – I'm more excited for McLaurin week by week because the matchups for the Redskins when they come back are the Giants and then – I'm sorry, are the Jets and then Detroit in week 12. So – Good matchup, multiple weeks of first team practice, collegiate connection. Yeah, we'll see. I think that the oper I think that they will begin to gel a little bit. And McLaurin, no, he wasn't a home run last game, but he he got some targets and he's a really good player. So I'm optimistic that he can be involved. In New Orleans, Alvin Kamara, Jared Cook, and Traquan Smith all returned to practice, limited practice, but. Uh, Sean Payton says on Alvin Kamara, I fully expect him to be ready to play. I thought he looked really good yesterday in practice. So if you got Kamara, celebrate. He's back. And this upgrade to Jared Cook is interesting to me as well. We, you, we've we already kind of highlighted this matchup against the Falcons. Should be a lot of points. At home, Jared Cook finally back. Last time we saw him, he had a pretty good game. So he, he now jumps right back into that option of a tight end streamer. Latavius Murray, when he was starting, number two on the week, number three on the week at the running back position. They go into the bye week. Kamara's going to be back out there, but th there's been some equivocation on how much. Right. So with the matchup, is there any consideration? They're at home. They're against Atlanta. Would you consider starting both players? Yes. Alvin Kamara and Latavius Murray and get production out of both? In a, in a pinch, I would. I still think it's going to be the Kamara show, his top three running back this week. Uh, Latavius Murray might be a little bit more involved than he was prior, but in those prior games when Alvin Kamara was there, Latavius Murray wasn't doing much. So I'm I'm a, lizard, a little hesitant to play You're a lizard? Murray. Speaking <laughs> of lizards. Oh, yeah. Alan Lazard. Cold-blooded. What is happening, my man? He's, uh, look. It's his name, oh, yeah. sure, sure. <laughs> but uh, I think we know who popularized the the Lazar. Oh, oh. Lazard! I think it's awesome. He has launched a yes. Lazard King clothing line. It's fabulous. Good, Good for, for you, you, man. Also, ten percent, please. Yes. <laughs> Do you think he was called that? Of course, he was called that. It's so low. It's right there. Is it? I this think has it been is. the confusing thing with me for the the Lizard King thing in general is. Why Why would people... Is it from The Office? Is that why? No, no. it's it's Jim Morrison. Oh, okay. Lee? So that's why it's low-hanging. Yes. Yeah, so okay. Singer of the Doors, like Lizard King has been in a thing for 50 oh, years. Oh, okay. Well, then, then we, I lay no claim to it. No, I don't lay any, a claim to of, it. Of any kind. I lay just 10%. Nope. Per, yeah. A claim of 10%. I no lay claim. no claim of 10%. That's right. I, I lay no claim other than I it's want It's just 10%. a marketing fee. <laughs> right. <Okay. laughs> We're his PR team. All right. In or out tomorrow game day alerts coming sunday morning join the foot.com if you want in on those sunday live one hour before sunday kickoff with mike news and notes is always brought to you by the sleeper app do not miss a single piece of impactful fantasy football news it's always breaking before we move into the breakdowns want to thank today's sponsor 
Pepsi. Mm. Pepsi taking all NFL celebrations. Kind of like you said, Pepsi. Whatever, man. I'm excited to talk about Pepsi. They take celebrations to the next level. A Hail Mary touchdown defensive stop on the goal line. Or me. This this week, I was at the boys' uh, flag football practice, and we played parents against the kids, sharks, minnows. Oh, yeah. Oh, I pulled. I, I got a double pull on the flags. Oh, you got both flags? I got both, and, and I pulled a full Jason Moore. I you, took those flags, I spread my wings, and I airplaned. You, you airplaned right to the concession stands, <laughs> crack open a Pepsi. You're darn right I did. Celebrating big time. You just start pouring it out. I'm pouring <laughs> one out for that team. <laughs> because Pepsi, look. They're an official sponsor with the NFL, and they make celebrations that much better. Your game day is that much better with a cold, refreshing Pepsi. It, look, the, remember just all the great celebrations you've had. They're better. They're better with, with a Pepsi. Pepsi, the official sponsor of the NFL, reminds you to always be celebrating. All right, and before we get into the fantasy forecast, one quick update. Take it for what you will. Adam Gay said Herndon looked very good in practice yesterday. Optimistic about him playing this week. Uh, that I really wanted to hear that. I, 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 if, he, if he was limited in practice, I wanted to hear Adam Gay say it's good to go. So now I'm, I'm all in on Herndon. Herndon? Herndon. Herd. Herd. You heard? He's hurting your lineup. <laughs> all in. So are we, go, we going to go from just being active to playing? Yes, I yes, think I will is. play him now. Plus matchup. Uh, Herndon Gesicki. That's a great question. I'll think about it. All right. Give it some thought, Mike. Yep. We'll come back. Fantasy Forecast. Also, let me know super soon, like before Sunday, because <laughs> those are my two tight ends in one of so my it, leagues. Super soon before Sunday? Yeah. So yeah. I have multiple days to figure this well, out. I just, Super soon. I just didn't want you to take the <laughs> Sean McVay approach, which is I'll let you know after they both play, and then I get the scores, and then I'll tell you. And then you'll say, call it. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I realized something, by the way, when I, uh, I don't know if you remember from the off season, I told you I could see the future and everything. Yes. Oh, yeah. The Eagles win the Super Bowl. That's true. But what I didn't know about time travel and seeing the future and things like that is the future is always based on absolutely no injuries. You never know mm. who's going to get so hurt. So when you travel to the future, yeah, no one you, got injured. Correct. That you, doesn't carry. It you. creates an alternate 1985. I was going to say, you have the out. It's the timeline. Because yeah. you've been to the future. As soon as you come back to this inflection point and you refer to oh that future, gosh. you have changed the timeline. There's and they one, don't call him the Reaper for nothing. Yes. All those injuries are his fault. Yes. Right. There's one timeline with Deshaun Jackson alive and well. And then there's one with them out. The only way you could not alter the timeline is if you just take the information, you tell no one about it. I'm saying profit from it. You go to Vegas, but you can't do a big bet. It no. has to be small enough that it flies under the radar. Ten if you do, bucks. If you do a big big bet, they'll report it. Yeah, and, Biff, and Biff will come get you. You've altered the timeline. Yeah. So time travel can net you about 20 bucks. <laughs> this is what I've realized. Okay, this is good to know. Raven, 6-2, and two, taking on the Bengals. Oh, sweet mercy. This game's in Cincinnati, where the Bengals are still 10-point underdogs. The debut of Ryan Finley. It's a 44.5-point over-under, but because of the line, the Bengals are only given 17.25 points. And this is, this is going to be rough. The Ravens' defense has been putting up some good fantasy performances in recent weeks. They got Jimmy Smith back last week. That's huge. This is a, a divisional game. The Bengals were already giving up the second most sacks. That's what Dalton was suffering under. And here is a rookie, Ryan Finley. There's not a lot of positive narratives that I can try to construct for Cincinnati no. and the weapons. Mixon, Boyd, like even through this point in the season, Tyler Boyd is near the top of the target numbers. It's pulling a Corey Davis. As you say, it just hasn't really mattered very much, right? These are not high value targets. Play people have gotten by with some out, out and tate flex plays. This is just kind of gross. What yeah. are you doing with Joe Mixon in this matchup where, you know, Mixon had a nice game uh before the bye. Are you talking about like on the season? I'm he's, just saying he's I, had a nice game. He's had a nice game during the season. Yes. Yeah. But you know, he's averaging 40 rushing yards per game. This is this is a funny stat. He has only two more rushing attempts than Lamar Jackson. <laughs> but 317 fewer yards than Lamar Jackson. Yep. Do I would you be, flex Joe Mixon? 
if if you have to. I, I'm treating him as a running back three at best. Like, the fact that they can't protect the quarterback and that in Baltimore, Baltimore's going to score. Baltimore's going to score a whole bunch of points. I am out on all Bengals if possible. Unfortunately, for someone like Joe Mixon, you might not have that luxury of being out, but I would be very happy to pivot away from him. I'm sorry. I'm reading a brand new story here on Pro Football Talk with the title of Ryan Finley is nervous, but the right kind of nervous. Oh, oh no. The right kind of oh, nervous? Oh, no. That's not true. He admitted some <laughs> nerves, you know. <laughs> no, that's not the right kind of nervous. <laughs> Guys. He says I'm more excited than anything. Oh, sure. Yeah, totally right. So why would you not just say... I'm, I'm excited. excited. The right kind of nervous. Because I would be I would be super nervous yeah, if he, I were Ryan Finley. He's going to get hit a lot. And the thing is Make is, sure your of uh, your affairs are in order, Finley like. He's listed at 63 but 185. This is a Mike Glennon situation. What? Yeah. So what? No. the reality for no. fantasy is what? I don't know if you can start any Bengals. You could start all of them with the chance, right? They're an NFL team. They're going to put up enough yards to get some garbage time. Maybe Tyler Boyd it's, ends up okay. Maybe Auden Tate ends up his number one uh, target. But we, we have no history here to draw upon to know where he's going to throw the ball, what the tendencies are, how much they're going to rely on Mixon. Are well, they going to be right. able to? They're, you know, you could start Mixon and maybe get lucky. You could start Tyler Boyd and maybe get lucky. You could start Auden Tate and maybe get lucky. I want to start none of them. Genuinely, Agreed. start no Bengals. Get a week uh, because I think that the odds for each player are much higher that they completely have a dud of a week than it is that they are the lucky one that ends up with and some fantasy. Hold on. it's a tough situation because Tyler Boyd only gave you two good weeks on the entire year, despite being top five in targets with Dalton. What if I told you that Ryan Finley was born in Phoenix, Arizona? Oh. It doesn't do anything. All right, you I mean no. no. How are you six three one eighty five in a professional athlete? That's blowing my mind right now. Jarvis Landry or Tyler Boyd? Jarvis, Jarvis. Landry. Okay. Well, Buffalo. Mm. Jarvis. Jarvis. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, this is what we're talking about. AJ Brown or Tyler Boyd? You're going AJ Brown, aren't AJ you? AJ Brown. Yeah. Man, that's that's unfortunate. A lot of investment in the in the fantasy season or in the draft season on Tyler Boyd. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you want to talk Robbie Anderson, right? Has done nothing is, but I would much I'd rather play start Robbie, Robbie yeah. Anderson than Tyler Boyd. He's at least got a a ceiling. We're gonna need to see Finley before we take chances, right? <laughs> and and that's the thing. And, and Baltimore's not the best debut. Tyler Boyd could have eighteen targets this week. You know, you know what I mean? Like he could for just, twenty it, yards. Well, may, maybe, but you just you cannot possibly project a good outcome as the odds It was on difficult favor. last week with Brandon Allen in Denver dealing with, okay, how much confidence can I have in Lindsay? Or, you know, they didn't throw – Mikey brought it up earlier. They didn't throw the ball to the running back. That was a variable we didn't know with Brandon Allen. Corlin Sutton, it was okay. I think he had 46 yards, but he did have the he touchdown. He stole so. fantasy points. On uh, the flip side. Yeah, start them. Start them all. Uh, I love Hollywood Brown this week. I, I did a head to head matchup against Al Smith, you know, from ESPN. And uh, he, he, I took Marquise Brown as one of my DFS plays hmm. because the, the upside, I think, is tremendous here. They don't have anybody that can guard his speed. And while this game certainly could be one where they don't need to throw much at all, this is a play from a lead situation, which Lamar Jackson is great at. He'll get a lot of rushing yards. And Mark Ingram was almost my start of the week. I just love pretty much all the main pieces for Baltimore. Yep. I think we can move on. Bills, six and two in Cleveland. Cleveland's two and six. The Browns are two and a half point favorites. That's the latest line that I have. Two and a half points. Yeah, two and a half, three. A 40.5 over under. That is a low one. But here we are with uh, a game that I do believe Cleveland wins. I, I would have picked them. I did pick them earlier in the week before the lines came out. But what kind of upside exists? I think this is not – Vegas has it as a low-scoring game. That's what I expect. This would be a big win, I think, for Buffalo in kind of overcoming some of the thing, you know, some of their consistency problems. This is a game that they should be able to go out there and impose their will. But right now – it's tough. It's a tough call. Kareem Hunt will make his debut this week for Cleveland. 
where are you guys at with this game and the fantasy options? I'm very excited for Nick Chubb, the the Buffalo Bills. We we highlight this every week. Are surprisingly bad against fantasy running backs. Twenty first against that position. They shut everything else down. I would try desperately to not play Baker Mayfield if I had the option. And man, the I mean, just the upside is so low. Like Odo ba- Odo Beckham should see a lot of Tre'Davious White. Tre'Davious White, like people can't do anything against him. He's he's at the top of the game right now. So I yeah, this you're is, lowering your expectations for anyone on the Brown side except for Nick Chubb. This this is a situation where the Browns need to get out early. They need to be able to run with Nick Chubb, use a little bit of Kareem Hunt to to get a lead because I think if they're down and they have to throw, they're not going to be able to do this against the Bills. Um I I I see the Bills in this game. I was surprised at the line. But, you know, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, uh, Nick Chubb, you, I'm not worried about Kareem Hunt. I think you can absolutely have him in as a top 10 running back this week with full confidence. It's a perfect matchup for him at home, somehow favored. Kareem Hunt, on the other hand. We are just under a full calendar year that, so, that Kareem Hunt has not played a professional football game. So we get to see it. Let's yeah. see it before we do more with it in fantasy. Is that the approach? That is, yes, that is my approach. Buffalo has allowed the sixth most fantasy points to running backs over the last month. That's You combine that with Nick Chubb, who's uh, second to CMC in rushing yards per game, and, and you can have confidence there. Uh, that's it. Josh Allen on the road. Allen has been a very pedestrian option at quarterback this year. I think we hoped for more rushing yardage. And he hasn't had big plays. And so that's kind of what we've run into. In fact, he looks... This season's run of games for Josh Allen reminds me a lot of last season's run of games with uh, Lamar Jackson where you never Mm, had that ceiling game. Now, you know, it's not outside the realm of possibility. We saw him from Josh Allen last year. But with the low over-under, being on the road in this game, I'm tempering my expectations for Josh Allen. Uh, I think he's probably a fringe quarterback one option. This is by apocalypse. You might need him, and I don't think you can't. I mean, you're going to get 20 points out of him. Yeah, I, I think he's a safe play. He's a floor play. I mean, a, a difference this year for Josh Allen, the Buffalo Bills can actually run the ball this year. I mean, think back to last year. It was Shady McCoy who was banged up all the time, and then they had this weird string of all their running backs just continued to get hurt. And they couldn't get anything done. And so it turned into Josh Allen had to be the de facto running back. I think that his the, the emergence of Frank Gore had a, a few good games. Now it's Devin Singletary, who's – I love Devin Singletary. And moving forward, love him in this matchup. That's taking rushing yards away from Josh Allen. Yes, and, and in this game, fantasy-wise for all of the <clears throat> ancillary pieces – the, the fact that both of these teams can be run on, Cleveland's allowing 141 rushing yards per game, and both teams want to run the ball with Nick Chubb and Devin Singletary, those are those games that they're over quick. You, while you're watching and it's on you know a slate and you're watching a bunch of games right. and all of a sudden the other games are going into the fourth quarter while this one's got like a minute left in the game because the clock just keeps running and I, you know, that's I think that's why the Vegas line is so low. So I look, we've talked about it several times over the last few weeks. What is Odell Beckham? Can you start him? You know, to me, Odell Beckham is a fringe wide receiver too. Uh, like that's that's the upside. Maybe a flex option, a wide receiver three type of player. He, John Brown in this game or Odell? John Brown's uh, averaging 75 yards a game. He's four or five catches a game. Do you like him more or less than Odell Beckham I, Jr.? I don't one? like either option in this, so I'm going to take the talent of Odell in that situation. Okay. You also managed to avoid a water bet there. Yeah, mm. because I don't want a water bet between two guys I don't like. But last week, Carlos Hyde and Adrian Peterson, were they were on the docket for you. I loved Adrian Peterson <laughs> last week. That's I wanted to find a bet. You were him. so wrong. What an <laughs> idiot. What a dummy I was. <laughs> Carlos Hyde wiped the floor with him. Yeah, point six. All right. There's another special game here. Atlanta, one and seven, coming off the bye, gets gets the privilege of traveling to New Orleans, or as I called it, St. Louis. 
Uh, the Saints at seven and one. Very strange. The Saints are eleven and a half point favorites. It's a fifty-one point over under. I think we're expecting with that line that Matt Ryan will be back and supplying Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Austin Hooper with some yardage. Drew Brees was three seventy-three and three last week as he was back in business against Arizona. He's at home. He's against Atlanta. Drew Brees is a must play this week. Oh, yes. Mike will play any quarterback, even Ryan Finley, against the Atlanta secondary. You need to pump the brakes over there. Atlanta. Okay, not true. Not true. <laughs> I, I might. You yeah, might, you, might. you genuinely <laughs> might. I mean, they were they were dead last all of last season. They and this year, they're 30th, giving up 23.8 fantasy points a game, which is more than they gave up last year on average. So, yeah, I mean, you you... you Nobody's not starting Drew Brees, but have a have a good time. And this, you know, this Vegas line, like the, <laughs> grab a Pepsi because <laughs> you're about to celebrate. Exactly, the Vegas line of fifty one is nice. It uh, implies a high point total, and we kind of are assuming that Vegas is seeing Matt Ryan there. But the, you know, because the spread is so wide in favor of uh, the Saints, the you know the Falcons are only implied nineteen points, which is very low for what they've been doing this season with Matt Ryan in a game where. Yes, it's difficult to uh, start running backs against the Saints, but quarterbacks and wide receivers have, have pretty much fared well by the end of the game against the Saints. What are you doing with Devonta Freeman? Devonta Freeman to me is a Oof. you know a, a guy fringe too. I, I I have him lower than that. I I don't. I mean, I I see him as a flex option. Freeman, Duke Johnson. Oh no, he's on by uh Ro well. Let's go here. Matt Breida. <laughs> Matt Breida versus Devonta Freeman. Matt Breida has the variable of the backfield situation, but he's got Seattle at home. There, I would that that's about where you're at. I Freeman. would go Freeman there. But take uh, Oh, you would? Yes. Okay. I, I would right. go Freeman there because of because of volume. Uh, would I you think go he, Freeman over Jamal Williams and chasing the touchdowns Jamal Williams has been putting up, top twenty performances each week. I would. You're still okay. t taking a number one over number two, so maybe he is not quite that low. But you know, we'll talk about other players, um, like David Johnson, right? A lot of people don't want to start him coming back. There, uh, that would be without question. I would go DJ. All right, no questions about Michael Thomas. He's out there. Jared Cook did return to practice. Wasn't really doing a lot. For fantasy owners, even when he was playing, well, his his last two games, he had a touchdown in both of them. Six but, targets, four for forty-one with a score, three for thirty-seven with a score. Just say he's back into the streaming conversation. You think he's back into that conversation yes. though, with his first week returning, as opposed to he is for me with, with at home coming off of the bye week with an implied team. What was the implied team total? Like thirty something points, thirty-two. I'm taking. I will take the shot on that. Yeah. Okay, and then Calvin Ridley. Jason, you talked about being able to pass on the Saints a little bit. This game's in New Orleans. Calvin Ridley, what do you think? Yeah, Calvin Ridley should be fine. He's going to get more snaps with Mohamed Sanu out of the way. And, you know, the Saints have been beat more by that second wide receiver. That's been a kind of common theme. So I think Calvin Ridley is, is a solid play in this matchup, assuming that you have Matt Ryan. Three out of the last four games in this rivalry have – Hit the under, for what it's worth. Um, I, I'm not as optimistic that Kamara puts up a top three week as you are in his first game back. I was trying to figure out a little water bet, but I think I'd be a fool to, to make a top ten bet with you. So we'll see what happens with the running back carry breakdown Kamara's first week back. Maybe I think we should monitor a little bit of those practice reports and how things are trending for Kamara as well. This could be one of those games where I think we know by now the Saints – if the guy's able to go, he's going to go. It doesn't matter if they're heavily favored. We thought Breeze would sit another week against Arizona. It didn't happen. So if Kamara's ready to go, he will be out there, and it's not like you're sitting him. So, Giants, Jets, oh, dear. Oh, dear. Uh, we've got a suggested movie title from our editor. Oh. Uh, it's Revenge <laughs> of the Beehole, The Battle for the Soul of New York. Hmm. The Soul? Now, why is it revenge? That's what I'm wondering. I'm trying to figure that, that out. That, like if it was Dolphins Jets. Yeah, why is it Revenge of the Beehole? It must just be a because it has a good. It's a good movie title. I don't know if is it actual. It would be more like Attack of the Beehole. Right. Right. Oh. Oh. There you go. Oh, improved. 
right? I mean, for for a first movie, and then the second movie, you got revenge coming right. at you like Pac Man. <laughs> sure. All right, this game is actually interesting for fantasy, right? This is what makes fantasy football fun: is you have a game between a two and seven and one and seven team, and and you're interested. I'm kind of interested <laughs> in a lot of these. I am too. Uh, options in this game. You know, you've got Daniel Jones, Sam Darnold. You've got Saquon. You've got Lev Bell situation. Does Lev Bell play? He's supposed to be practicing today in a limited fashion. If he doesn't, then you've got the Blau Pal dart Blau throw. Jamison Crowder, Mike, you yes. love him. I like Golden Tate a lot this week. Herndon's yeah. back for me. Yeah, I, I like I like this game a lot. This you know Vegas only has this as a forty three and a half point over and under. I definitely. Uh, think that that hits the over this is a game where as soon as you know Saquon breaks off a long run or you know if if uh, you know Robbie Anderson grabs a deep ball I think the gates are going to open up for scoring because neither of these defenses can really like these are offenses that can work but can also get shut down by a good defense but neither defense is going to be able to shut down these offenses so I think you're going to have a back and forth scoring affair I want pieces in this game I know we've got some starts of the week in this game on both sides of the field what about Daniel Jones he's had a couple of monster games and then outside of those monster games complete duds I think you, you can stream him I think he's that more emergency style play like you would play Stafford Mike against Chicago of over course. Daniel Jones of right? course yeah, yeah. Uh, how about in this game right like Darnold versus Daniel Jones. I'll take Jones. Yeah, Jones will be without Shepard again. He'll be without Ingram. But I lean Mike's direction on that one. I think I take Darnold. I, I, I think, you know, Darnold is a talented quarterback. He's obviously been seeing ghosts since that uh, Patriots game, and we haven't seen him play well. But the the New York Giants secondary has really not been good you know they're they're 25th against quarterbacks, 29th against wide receivers. Uh, obviously, Darnold had a great matchup last week and did not come through. Yeah, that, I'm I'm fully out on the Jets, just fully, unequivocally out. O U T. As in, as in, not going to read optimism into matchups, not going to read optimism into weapons. Um, Ten percent of their drives have ended up in points. That's dead last in the league. I just choose. I choose not to choose them. <laughs> okay, so does that include? Does that go all the way down to say Crowder? I think Crowder's fine. Yeah, but you wouldn't take a shot on a Robbie Anderson, Chris Herndon. I mean, uh, you're you're talking about Gasicki versus Herndon. If you're completely out on the Jets, you don't think they could turn anything around? I'm not playing Herndon this week. I'm gonna play Gasicki over Herndon for sure. Yeah, I don't know how the snap break. I brought it up last week when we thought Herndon might actually play. I don't know what the snap breakdown is gonna be between Griffin and Herndon and Herndon re injury. Like, there's. When you're at the end of the line with tight ends, like I'd certainly be looking at like Delaney Walker, it's looking less likely he'll suit up this week. So I'm I'm much more excited about Jonu Smith on Monday night against Kansas City than I am that situation. Sure. It's worth noting uh that with Jameson Crowder, he has the number one advantage matchup according to Pro Football Focus. Mm. Um I like Crowder. Yeah, so Cor Corey Ballantyne is the uh, slot cornerback who is not going to fare well. Valentine's Day? Mm. I The reason I like Crowder, by the way, is because he's done it with Darnold multiple times, despite them being the worst freaking yeah. team to watch right now. I it, it was kind of interesting. I put out a poll. I said, <laughs> I put it this way. I said, gun to your head. What team would you, you know, you have to be a team. Or, sorry, team? you have to be a fan of a team for the next 15 years. And I said, either the Bengals, the Jets, the Browns or the Dolphins, 25,000 votes. Fan, fans wanted to be fans of the Browns. Then it was the Dolphins. Then it was the Jets. Then it was the Bengals. Bengals only 12%. That's, the, that's kind of an optimism situation. Most people look at Miami and say, okay, it's terrible. But they've got like I'm infinite, trusting the process, infinite man. picks. And then the Browns, it's been bad, but they've got weapons and they've got a quarterback in that situation so less optimism for Jets and Bengals fans right now Jets fans calling for Adam Gaze do you think if they lose this game at home against the Giants Adam Gaze could get cut before the end of the year 
Well, you know our opinion that Adam Gase should absolutely be fired. He is not a good coach, in my opinion, at all. That being said, I don't think it's possible for him to get fired because he came in and got the GM fired and then handpicked the GM who would be in charge of firing Adam Gase to some degree. So I, I don't think it's going to actually happen. Somehow, Gase did the same thing in Miami and kind of stayed there longer than he should have. So I think it'll be a while. Sorry, Jets fans. Chiefs, 6-3, and three, taking on the Titans. Titans are 4-5. and five. Uh, The Chiefs have an implied total of 27, Titans 21. The Chiefs are 5.5-point favorites, and we expect Patrick Mahomes back. I think I might have misspoke a moment ago saying this was Monday night. Uh, it's obviously not a Monday night game. But Mahomes, Tannehill, are there some sneaky plays on the Titans side of the ball with Mahomes coming back, pace of play, the likelihood that the Titans will have to come back in this game. I know my optimism towards like AJ Brown, for example, is rising. Okay. For this week. Okay. I this is the Titans are gonna try their best to do their impression of the Colts with Derrick Henry. I mean, you have the the Kansas City's thirtieth against fantasy running backs, and that this team, that's how they have to beat beat Kansas City but uh, I do have a, a slight bit of optimism for AJ Brown he's been he's been fine with uh with Ryan Tannehill as the quarterback he's the pref my preferred wide receiver from this team even though he's not the number one guy maybe he's not even the number three guy because you have Tajay Sharp being considered the starter but if I have to play one of them it's going to be Brown it's it's funny because Derrick Henry is to me the story of this game it's not whether Pat Mahomes plays and you know the the high flying chiefs it's all about Derrick Henry because since Indianapolis took Marlon Mack and just took right. a Mack truck to them and won the game that was with Mahomes since that point every team has been doing that to Kansas City you look at the last few weeks Houston dominated them on the ground Denver had a good game with Royce Freeman. That was Aaron Jones' monster game against him. Minnesota last week, obviously, with Dalvin Cook, had a great game. Yeah, they, but they should be able to use Derrick Henry to destroy this defense. They should. No, but the I, problem no, I is, don't agree because the reason that happened, the reason it happened in Indianapolis has been remedied. Chris Jones is back. Chris Jones is back on the field now this week. So that, that will change the equation. Was Chris Jones he back went, last week? He went yes. out. Yeah, he was. Okay, because, I, I mean, obviously it's Dalvin Cook. is great, but, you know, they, yeah, I mean, they, it, they were still bad. Sure, but not to the degree that they were in the preceding weeks. And I don't think, you know, with Patrick Mahomes, I expect him to get up on, on, the, on the Titans in this game and maybe not give them that option. So I'm not saying don't play Derrick Henry. I just think the equation's a little bit different than we've seen with Chris Jones out of the game. Well, I think we all agree he's one of the best yes. tackles, if not the best inside tackle in football. He's he's up at the top of the defenders, yeah. Uh, yeah, so my, my point, though, is if Kansas City gets up, Derrick Henry is the type of back that has to go away. He's not, 100%. So this is a, you know, a real boom-bust game for him, and you've got to kind of pick what you think the game script is going to be. I mean, it's not that you're not going to start Derrick Henry – um, you know, if you think Andy that Kansas City is going to get up, would this finally be a game that maybe Deion Lewis shows up or staying away no matter what? I'm staying away from him because he's he's not the same player anymore. You you watch him catch the ball on the outside, he can't escape tackles. When he was with New England and he was a good running back two years ago, he was breaking tackles on the reg on the reg. He's not doing that anymore. So no, I I don't have any optimism to that. And the Titans will try to stick with the running game, like you said as long as humanly possible, if anything, simply to slow the scoring pace of the Chiefs, even if the Chiefs are scoring. I'm just very excited for this game for, for the Chiefs' side of the ball. Uh, they have a 27-point implied point total, as I said. Damian Williams has an opportunity with Mahomes back. This is the first time Mahomes is going to be back out there with all of his weapons. Right. He hasn't had a healthy Sammy Watkins, a healthy Tyreek Hill, Kelsey, Williams, on the field at the same time. So if we think Mahomes is back, I just don't know how they don't score on the Titans, Mike. What do you, how, how do you look at this matchup? Uh, was it all Damian Williams in the backfield? Yeah, that's that's what I was going to bring up next is what what do we do with Damian Williams who came out and if, if I'm remembering correctly, that was the highest snap percentage that Damian Williams has had the the entire season. He handled 
almost all of the Kansas City uh, running back carries. Mm -hmm. Like it was his job, and he looked great doing it. it. That's also helped by a ninety yard ninety one yard rushing touchdown. But I do think the job is is currently back to Damian Williams for the foreseeable future, and the fact that Mahomes is back that's that's huge for Damian Williams and that wheel route, which is nearly unguardable. So I've, I'm playing Damian Williams. I'm playing him with running back two confidence, but there's not very many guys that you play like, ah, this is my running back two. But that guy could finish it in the top ten or the top five easily on this week because of the Chiefs offense. If, for some reason, Mahomes doesn't play, how does it change your view of this game? Um, you know, I think it definitely changes the view. You're you're still going to play Tyreek and Travis Kelsey, but the 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 ancillary options. You know, you can always throw McCole Hardman in there. He's had two games now where he's finished the game with negative points, and I'm still willing to throw him in a lineup because he can always bust off a 50 yard touchdown. But I think it's far more likely if Pat Mahomes is there. I'm not going to worry about any of the ancillary pieces and. I'm much further down on Damian Williams if it's if it's Matt Moore. The last week, the nice thing is I'm confident in Damian Williams this week. Uh, in in general, as the starter, as the starter, I'll put I'll play him uh, with with you know uh, without much second guessing myself. But it is worth noticing. <laughs> this is a great tweet from uh, Keaton Denley, uh, one of the footballers' writers. The 91 yard run last week. It represents 9.5% of Damian Williams' career rushing yards. He's in his sixth season. <laughs> so That's that, an absolutely insane stat. Yeah. Wow. The only, the only kind of uh, wrinkle that I'm worried about on the Chiefs side is, I don't know if people are aware, Eric, Eric Fisher returned and kind of re-aggravated an injury. I don't think Eric Fisher's back out there this week. Hmm. Probably not for a few weeks, which is not good for – Patrick Mahomes is blindside and some of the things like he's not necessarily going to be able to escape the pocket with the same consistency that this he did before defense. the injury. It is. It's, it's a good defense, no doubt about it. And they're at home. So, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, they're able to slow the chiefs down. I just, I'm encouraged by the fact that they, he has all of his weapons and we get a, what do you do with the lizard King in this one? I'm playing him. I, because I mean, I'm, I'm assuming Mahomes is back. So I'm playing Sammy Watkins. Yeah, I mean, he, As, he gets enough targets, and you've I mean, got he's, uh, yes, he's he's very disappointing, but he's still a wide receiver three, and in the majority of fantasy leagues out there, you're either playing two in a flex or you're playing three wide receiver. Like, you can be upset with Sammy Watkins and his output so far, and but, I choose to be. But he's a starting fantasy wide receiver. I, I was trying to type his name in here, but I accidentally wrote Wartkins. Mm. Ooh, Freudian slip Oof. there. Uh, yeah, he was the wide receiver 30 last week. That was the first time since week one that he's been inside the top 30 at wide receiver. But he tends to do the best when you don't want to start him on the road at Tennessee. I don't really want to start him. Uh, and then to speak to Joni Smith, if Walker does not play, Kansas City is giving up the highest opposing tight end market share in the NFL, 27%. Um, I tweeted earlier this week, Joni Smith has the highest yards after the catch of all tight ends in 2019, albeit slightly a more limited sample than yeah, some of the other volume. guys. But it, but enough catches to, to take note of it. Athletic guy. This seems like a game where if the game script goes Chiefs ahead – you could be in a situation where they need to lean on Joe New Smith a little bit. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on. We're going to get into the starts. Starts of the week. All right, Jason, why don't you kick us off with your quarterback start of the week for week 10? My start of the week this week, and he's in my league of record lineup, is Phillip Rivers going to Oakland in a divisional matchup. It's basically based on Oakland who has <laughs> sucked against quarterbacks. They are 31st on the year. Here are the recent quarterback performances. Jacoby Brissett threw four touchdowns against them. Chase Daniel had two touchdowns. Aaron Rodgers had his nuclear 429-5 and five game against the Raiders. Watson with three. Stafford with three. Phillip Rivers is a very capable, competent quarterback. And capable he's, and competent. Yeah, I mean, well, that, that's like the praise that Philip Rivers deserves. He's not this high-flying, you know, I don't expect 450 and 5 like 
Aaron Rodgers did. But this is a game where Oakland has been so bad against the quarterback. And, you know, it's a get right game for Keenan Allen. I like Mike Williams in the game. And yeah. the matchup is so good for Hunter Henry because Oakland has been very susceptible to tight ends. That's where, you know, you get around that that goal line. We've seen it with a career of Antonio Gates. Phillip Rivers throws touchdown passes to tight ends. So, I, you know, I, I think uh, if it wasn't obvious that Hunter Henry would be starting, he would have been my start of the week um, at, at tight end. I'm going with Jameis Winston. The matchup against Arizona is the highest over under of the week. J it's Jameis is a very funny quarterback where – Sometimes you want to rank him 14th. Sometimes you want to rank him in the top five. And this is one of those matchups. The Arizona is giving up the most passing yards in the league, the most fantasy points allowed to the quarterback position only twice this year. Only twice have they not given up a top 10 quarterback. And that includes four times of giving up a top two or better option at the quarterback position I love Jameis this week if you play him or if you got him you play him I'm on the other side of the ball here with Kyler Murray against Tampa in Tampa uh, fantasy finishes for quarterbacks that have faced Tampa Bay since week three second fourth third 14th 11th first last week Russell Wilson torched them he gets one of his most valuable advantages back in the passing game which is David Johnson he's their best receiver that's Pretty true. So, uh, you know, whether or not they Kirk's get... He Kirk's healing yeah, up, too. Kirk's healthy, and then, uh, you know, you'd love to see them involve Andy Isabella more just for big plays, we not would. that you can count on it, but last week, that one play defined the entire game it did. for Kyler Murray's fantasy output. So, uh, Mike and I liking both quarterbacks in that matchup. Yeah, and I, I agree with the, the fact that the best player receiving option might be David Johnson. He is my start of the week at running back. And you might go, what? Because what? Look, a couple weeks ago, he was active. And if you started him, you got absolutely nothing. Can you trust to put him back in week one? Now he has Kenyon Drake, who looked awesome last week. There are reports of, uh, you know, the, the maybe it's going to be more of a timeshare, ease David Johnson back in. And that's not reports from the team or the, the really close beat writers. Um, those are pretty much just maybe that'll happen right. ideas that are out there. And Tampa Bay has been awesome against running backs. So why is David Johnson my start of the week? I want people to be confident that he is going to play. He is going to take over his role. And why I think he succeeds against this really good Tampa Bay run defense is because he's already not been good at running the ball. He's great as a receiver. Some of the interior beat reporters are talking about how they're planning on using David Johnson out wide, almost more as a wide receiver, and they could do that now with Drake. That's where David Johnson is going to beat the Tampa Bay. I mean, that's where Tampa Bay is is beaten. Right. You, you know, he is basically going to be a wide receiver in this matchup. And I'm not saying like, oh, David Johnson is going to have the best game of the week. But you're there's so many questions going on right now of David Johnson or there, I have them. Yeah, I have those questions big time. You know, I don't know what his workload is going to be. If you're talking about guys that have had good games recently, you know, your Latavius Murray's, Joe Mixon's, and Jamal Williams, Burita's, you know, I'm starting David Johnson over that whole tier of guys, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it on the first game back, so that's why I'm making it. And you're him. not going to apologize for I'm it. I'm not. That's why I'm making it my start of the week this week, is to give you confidence that he is a, uh, a high-end running back two this week. Mike? Uh, all right, I'm jumping in. We I had talked about this player as I wasn't ready to start him until – I saw the actual transition. Jason was more bullish than I was last week, but the transition happened. Is Devin Singletary starting running back for the Buffalo Bills? 20 carries last week to go along with a very high target share. Four targets last week, six targets two weeks ago. He's involved in that. Makes me so happy. He's involved in that aspect of the game. He's running. He's an amazing player where his, his stature and athletic – uh, measurables say he should not be able to do the things that he does, but he does them. So we need to stop doubting that he is, that he can get it done at the NFL level. And if you want to talk about those peripheral things, Cleveland allowing the fifth highest yards before contact and Devin Singletary has the six most 20 plus yard runs. Like he is a big play waiting to happen. Get him the head of steam against Cleveland. Who's allowing a 
a high yards before contact. Devin Singletary, to me, has a high probability of ripping off like a 40-yard touchdown in this game. I'm playing him as an RB2 with upside. All right, my running back start of the week is a guy that I wish wasn't my running back start of the week because I'm facing him in a couple of leagues, and that is Aaron Jones. In the last four weeks, he's had two complete duds, single-digit fantasy outputs, one explosion and one pretty nice game. But it's been kind of hard to predict that in backfield. It's narrative street a little bit, but the lack of involvement of Aaron Jones last week severely hurt Green Bay and their offensive output. And they're facing uh, a defense that's just given up two straight top five RB performances. So uh, going Aaron Jones. Sure. At wide receiver, I'm going NBA Jam rules here. This guy is heating up now that he's found his new team. Emmanuel Sanders is going to catch fire this week. Seattle is a team that can score on San Francisco. I know their defense has been phenomenal, but Russell Wilson says, I don't care. I don't care about your phenomenal defense. I'm going to run on you. I'm going to pass on you. I'm going to do whatever I want. I'm Russell Wilson. And that's going to Russell? actually Russell Wilson. That's going to actually put Jimmy Garoppolo in a position where he might need to catch up or at least keep pace ahead of him. Either way, they're going they're not just going to be able to run the ball for 300 yards and throw the ball 10 times and he has his number one wide receiver that's been clear they've already connected the 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 slot cornerback matchup against Jamar Taylor is very good for Emmanuel Sanders Seattle's been so beatable I I, I think I think I can't imagine benching Emmanuel Sanders I on my roster either. after what he's done with the Niners so far so I'm making him my start of the week this week all right, Mike. I'm going with Jamison Crowder, a 20, over 24% target share. And this is just – he is – he's the safe play of this offense. And the matchup against the Giants is oh so delightful. He averages nearly 15 PPR points a game with Sam Darnold, right around five if, if you don't have Sam Darnold there. And it's – the New York Giants are the, the number one matchup for fantasy wide receivers. Detroit – Scored the most points at the wide receiver position two weeks ago. Dallas, 12th this past week. So I really like Jameson Crowder as a, as a very safe play. Yeah, we like the wide receivers in this matchup because yeah. I'm going Golden Tate. Doing his best OBJ impression last week. So far and away, the Giants' best wide receiver. And the Jets are a sieve when it comes to giving up fantasy points. They just made uh, Devontae Park, or, uh, they made Parker and Preston Williams look like Julio and Roddy White last week. And the Jets are just on a downward spiral. So uh, no Ingram, no Shepard. Golden Tate should be very safe this week, and he always has big play upside uh, with Daniel Jones. Tight end. All right, I'm going to do it. Oh, gosh. I know, but, you know, the reason I'm doing this is because I've chosen <laughs> – No, you get you get that out of my face. <laughs> okay, it's out. It's out. I have chosen <laughs> – Oh, O.J. Howard, look, <laughs> the biggest absolute bust of this season, I think, is O.J. Howard. Uh, may maybe Odell Beckham is in the conversation, Joe yeah. Mixon. We'll see. But at, at Howard's least, definitely the biggest bust of the tight end position. Yes, he was expected to have a breakout monster year, and he has been uninvolved as the number one and number two wide receivers in fantasy football say, all your targets belong to me. Uh, but... I don't think O.J. Howard's going through the season without having a big game. I mean, his rookie year when he wasn't that involved, he had a couple of big monster games because he has the capability of the 80-yard touchdown, stiff arm a guy to death, and just run to, to the house. Death. That's not nice. I mean, we've seen it from, you know, Vance McDonald did it yeah. once. and Those and guys are not alive anymore? <laughs> that Well, that... I think I don't I don't think that guy's in the NFL anymore. I do think he I I legit think oh, no. that was his last play. Um so I apologize to all the cornerbacks of the Arizona Cardinals, but this is a combination of OJ Howard's physical talent mixed with what Arizona has given up to tight ends. If OJ Howard has a big game this year, I'm going to go ahead and make the unsurprising claim that it comes against the worst team against tight ends. Arizona has not been able to guard them around the end zone or Anywhere else on the field. <laughs> end zone, between the 20s. Between the 20s, in inside the, the 20s. Around the 50. Especially that painted area. 
Um, I, honestly, if he was on the sideline, he'd still catch the ball and nobody would be on him. Are you willing to close the book on him after this one if uh, yes, if, if it's a collapse? Yes, 100%. But I am. I did pick him up to play. This is not a he's coming back to fantasy greatness. I, I think this is a plus matchup for this week. All right, Mike, you've got a very intriguing tight end start. He was the waiver wires. And by the way, Jason, I applaud you. Thanks. I applaud you because you're willing to go out there and, and put it on the line with O.J. Howard. Yeah. And that's not something that I'm willing to do. <laughs> so I give you credit. <laughs> Thanks. You Mike? He was a waiver wire star this week. I'm going with Mike Gesicki. He's averaged near uh, 50 yards a game the last four weeks. He's getting more and more involved. Preston Williams is out. That's a, that's a huge that's one. That's a to permanent me. one, too. Yes, that's a torn ACL. Preston Williams is gone. And the matchup is great. Colts giving up top 10 points to the tight end position. So everything is there for this guy to be just scooped right off the wire and, the wire and played as a bye week replacement. It's interesting, too. I mean, I, I realize most of the week with Miami we've been focused on, well, now Mark Walton's out and it's going to be Belage plus what can you do with Belage? But I – you know that's going to be another thing where they might be able to rely on Gasicki a little bit more. He he was drafted to be this. He was a second round pick, right? It, and it's and, high capital for yes. a tight end. Yeah, and if if you're not familiar with his measurables, they're unmeasurable. Yes, I mean he they're, you oh, can't even measure them. OJ OJ Howard is one of the freakiest players that has ever done. You know the, when it comes to the the combine, his measurables were off the charts, and he is not as good as Gasicki was at the combine. I believe he was Mike Gusicki, 99th percentile, or is he 100th at, percentile? At 6'6", 200th percentile. 6'6", 247, ran a 4 40 yard dash. Well, let's hope they continue to use him. He had his uh, kind of a breakout game last week. That's preposterous. Speaking of draft capital, I'm going the Hockeyles route this oh, week. No hawk strap here. No, I'm going back out there. And TJ Hawkinson against Chicago. I agree with Mike. I think Stafford keeps things going against uh, Chicago, but Chicago slows the wide receivers down a little bit. I think part of it's going to be leaning on their ho own hockey league. or the other team. The other team. Oh. It's, all time. It's, it's they slow both. time down in general. <laughs> it's a, we're back to the alternate 1985, Mike. No, but I think this is a game that you can start TJ Hawkinson. Uh, Chicago just gave up the first kind of huge game to Zach Ertz. They've given up five Top 12 tight end performances this year. And Hawkinson, three catches last week, I think 54 yards. I like him this week as a start of the week. So I feel like it's, uh, you know, that's going out there. A lot of people disappointed with what he's done, but I think there's an opportunity this week for value. There's a lot of tough tight end decisions this week. Yeah. And with Herndon practicing, with Jonu maybe getting another start as the only tight end, a lot of decisions to be made. None more important than the kicker position. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. This Sunday's gonna be a great day, because you'll have a great kicker of the Bucks, Matt Gay. Great day indeed. Great day. That was doubt. Some of your rhymes, they, they take a little more work. Some don't. No, when when it's a three letter word that ends in a, I could have rhymed that a hundred different oh, you ways. Would, yeah. Oh my goodness. I could do this. Now I thought for maybe. Days. I thought maybe. You just rhymed, what did your your original word was day. Yeah, Jason. you just rhymed day with day. So I you did were, it again. <laughs> you were you were celebrating how many words you could have rhymed with, and you chose and the you same went the one same word two times in a row. <laughs> no way. Jay Feely. How about we get Jay Feely as your kicker of the week one of oh. these weeks and get him to – we need this We need this on tape. We need you fielding – and it's important to me. I want you to field a kickoff. No, okay, sure. I want you – a punt is fine too. Punt, kickoff. But off. I want you to – they're very different. I'll catch yes. 100% they're of them. They're very, very different. And I don't think – I want Jay Feely. I, I saw I saw you, Jay. You, I got the follow from Jay Feely. Yeah, because he's ready. Yeah, he's ready. You kick the balls, I'll catch the balls. Mm -hmm. And then I'll probably just throw them straight back to you from there. <laughs> just Never lacking he... for confidence. <laughs> Never lacking for confidence. <laughs> A reminder, in or out tomorrow, injury updates, game day alerts at jointhefoot.com, uh, consistency charts at jointhefoot.com, and a whole bunch of extra perks over there for the community. 
And we want to thank today's studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, a Sony Michelle signed jersey, $46.68. You're only allowed to wear it uh, like one out of every three weeks. That's the Sony Michelle jersey rule. Gotcha. But uh, hundreds of daily auctions over there, your favorite team, your favorite players. Uh, we're getting towards Christmas. Great gifts. Use the registration code BALLERS. Ballers. That is it for today. Back with more Fantasy Forecasts tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in, supporting the podcast. We appreciate you. Take care. Good luck tonight, Foot Glenn. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. All right, Foot Clan, and remember, Pepsi takes all NFL celebrations to the next level, all of mine, that's for sure. There are certain things that are just staples of game day. Maybe it's uh, having that pizza on the table. For me, it's having that Pepsi on the table. They know how to help you celebrate, and uh, each and every week they come into play when it comes to celebrating that big-time win. I'm going to be celebrating with a Pepsi when the Jay Feely kick hits oh, Jason in the face. Absolutely. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Pepsi, the official sponsor of the NFL, reminds you to always be celebrating. I need a Pepsi for my, for my ouch face. <laughs> <laughs>